Today I'm going to show you how to fill out IRS Form 4868, the IRS form to file for an automatic extension of your tax return. Coming up next on Holy Schmidt. Holy Schmidt! For such a small form, one fourth of a page in size, Form 4868 has created a lot of confusion for folks over the years. This video will take all of the mystery out of the form and replace it with easy to use action steps. Stick around to the end because I'm going to show you the three things you need to do to avoid paying late fees in the form of interest and penalties. Now let's get right into the form. The form comes as the first page of a four page pack that you get right from the IRS. Just go to Google and type in IRS form 4868. The form is usually the top entry below any ads that might appear. Make sure that you choose the entry that takes you to the IRS website and not some third party website. Now go ahead and click now and form 4868 will appear. You'll notice in the upper left hand corner that there's a description about the three ways to file an extension. Option number one is to use direct pay, the electronic federal payment system. By paying all or part of your taxes due, that is enough to file an extension in the eyes of the IRS. Option number two is to use IRS e-file using your home computer. To be frank, most people don't do this. And then option number three is filing a paper form 4868 and sending it to the IRS by mail. We're going to talk about filing by mail here today, so we're going to talk about option number three. First, a few things. Number one is that the form is for individual tax returns only, no corporate returns, no company returns, partnerships, etc. Second is that the form gives you filing relief until October 15th, but it doesn't give you relief on interest or penalties on the amount that you owe. So if you owe a balance when you file your return later, you also owe interest and penalties on that balance. Third is that there's no explanation necessary. The IRS doesn't need to know why you need the extension. They just want you to fill out the form and send it in. You'll be in good company because hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people file an extension request every single year. You'll notice that there are two simple parts to the form. Part one, which is basically the part that is used to identify who you are. And here, you put in your name, your address, city, state. zip code, social security number, and your spouse's social security number if you are married filing jointly. That is all there is to part one, the identification part of the form. Part two is if you want to make an estimated payment. Now this is interesting because most of the time, if you know what your tax liability is for the year that you're filing the extension on, you would know this by having done the tax return. So in a way, this is, this is quite problematic for most people. So this is why what most people do, or a lot of people do here, is they don't really estimate the total of their tax liability for the year and they don't really know or haven't calculated their total payments of 2019 in this case. So they just leave parts four and five blank and as six as well because six is just a product of, of one minus the other. Instead, they just write a check if they're going to pay an estimated tax amount. And let's say that estimated tax amount is $9,000. That's all you need to do on part two of the form. Now, also, there is a special 
part of the form, line eight, which is, asks you if you're out of the country. With line eight, you don't have to file uh, your tax return until June 15th, so you may not need an extension if it's before June 15th. Still, if you need an extension post June 15th, you get four months instead of six. It still takes you to the October 15th date that you are obligated to file your tax return by. You are quote unquote living outside of the country. If you live outside of the United States or Puerto Rico and your main place of work is also outside of the United States or Puerto Rico, or you're in the military or naval service on duty outside of the US or Puerto Rico. As I said before, if you qualify as being out of the country, you're still eligible for the extension, even if you're physically present during the last four months of the extension period. But the extension is for four months and it's from June 15th onward. That gets you again to October 15th. Number nine is a special situation where you receive wages as an employee that are not subject to US income tax withholding. To be frank, that rarely happens. Now, once you've filled out form 4868, you need to know where to send the form. So if you go to page four, you will see three columns. The top left column asks you which state you live in. In my case, for example, I live in New York, so this is this line right here. And if I live in New York and I am sending in a payment, then I'm going to send it to P.O. Box 37009, Hartford, Connecticut, 06176 7009. Now, if I'm not sending in a payment, then I just simply address it to Kansas City, Missouri, 64999-045. Make sure you identify the recipient as the Internal Re Revenue Service or the IRS in either case. One point here worth noting is that if you're sending in a payment, you're sending it to a PO box. So private mail delivery, such as FedEx, etc., won't deliver to a post office box. So you need to use the US Postal Service to send in your form and your payment. If you're just sending the form in without a payment, you can use private mail and you can send that just to Kansas City, Missouri or whatever your applicable mailing address is for the state in which you live. A final point, it's vital that you send the form in by April 15th or June 15th if you live out of the country in order to qualify for the extension. If you send it in after that date, there's no guarantees that the IRS will accept it. Finally, if you want to avoid paying interest and penalties when you do file your tax return, make sure that you pay enough tax to cover your tax liability. I will say if you overpay, the IRS will send you the difference back as a refund. And if you underpay, well, they're, they're going to charge you interest and penalties on the difference between what you paid and what you owe. So if you're trying to avoid interest and penalties, I would actually consider overpaying versus underpaying. So ladies and gentlemen, that's it. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up so that others can find the video on YouTube as well. YouTube uses the thumbs up as their algorithm and it tells YouTube that it's a good video and worthy of other people who are interested in the subject matter. Also, don't forget to hit subscribe below and click notifications so that you can get alerted the next time I post a video. Finally, if you'd like to know where you sit in your retirement savings compared to the average American, click this video right here and I will take you through it age bracket by age bracket. Thanks for watching.